Hey, what's up? It is Christine Horn, and you are watching Actors Daily Bread. This is where I teach you how to crush your auditions, book more work, and live a life that you love. I have a special guest today. That's who's over here, Dave Pileggi, the Dave Pileggi. Amazing mm -hmm. actor, coach, speaker, author. Now we're going to get into that. I mean, <laughs> and man of God, like all of that, husband, father. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So you're in the right place. Make sure you stick around. If this is your first time watching, put a one in the comments. So I know this, I can welcome you, welcome you, welcome you. If you've watched about three, put three. If you're an OG member, we go together. Go ahead and put OG in the comments so I can just <laughs> love on you. <laughs> so all my replay watchers who will watch this later. What's up, replay watcher? Love you guys. Hey, and if you're listening on the Hollywood Bound Actors podcast, which you absolutely should and subscribe to, um, I want to welcome you too and thank you for listening. So. Let's get right into it. Me and Dave have been trying to do a podcast, an interview for, I mean, a long time. A long time. <laughs> so I saw you released, first of all, congratulations. You released a new book called 52 Pillars. Yes. Um, and I'm so, just friend to friend, I'm excited for you. Now we're authors. We're both authors now. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to get into all of that. But first, for people who may not be familiar with you, um, and wondering why I'm like gushing and smiling so hard over here. Tell, who, who, who are you? Who are you? What do you do? Where are you based? Give us a little. Uh, Golly. So I am based in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, got an amazing family. My wife, Wendy, my kiddos, eight-year-old Stella and four-year-old oh, Liam. Eight. They're growing up. Oof. Eight. Already? She's about to turn nine in November. You want to talk about having issues. I need some <laughs> counseling and some prayer about my little girl turning nine. Oh my oh. gosh. But it's amazing. Like it's, it's, it's just mind blowing. Really it is. Um, how God's just blessed us so much with such an awesome family. And um, we've been in the entertainment industry um, for almost 12 years now. Okay. And uh, it's been an amazing, amazing ride. It really has. It's been, uh, it's been super exciting. We, uh, a year and a half ago, in the midst of our travels in the entertainment industry, started a studio called The Creative, uh, where we meet craft with purpose. And we talk to people about their why. Why are you in the industry? What is your purpose? And so we roll all of that together while making sure they're super skilled at their craft also combining that with purpose and so um yeah it's been an amazing ride so far that's that's one of the actual things not that i love about you and the work that you do but also that the fact that you brought that to to the community because and you you know i talk about this all the time you know just going 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 for this career is there's so many things that come up and it can't be all encompassing like it it has to be there has to be balance and mm -hmm. because it can drive you nuts. So if you don't have something that's grounding you or knowing what the bigger picture is for you and your life, yes. it, can, it can just re really drive you mad. Um, and also, you know, Dave's uh, Space the Creative, we have a, a special connection to it because the first year I did an event, I had an idea to do my event, Hollywood Bound Actors Live. And I didn't know where I wanted to do it. And I just kind of put a feeler out on Facebook and Dave reached out to me. And was like, we have this new space. We haven't, we don't, we haven't really let anybody use it, but I trust you. And, I, and so we got to do our first event there. And I'm so grateful for yeah. you. Yeah. It was so intimate. It was so, the energy, as soon as you walk in the space, the energy was so good. And everybody who was there, put, put, put in the comments, those of you who were there that first year, um, 2018, 2018 yeah. of August. And look, for those of you who weren't there, you better get in the next one because, oh my gosh, she crushes. This event is ridiculous. <laughs> I was so, it was so great. You know, Dave, you're known around town outside of being a great actor. We got to work together. We only worked together really once, I think. Was that on Complications? I feel like that was yeah, the complications. Yeah, complications. Yeah, pilot. It was a USA pilot called Complications. Yeah. Um, but you're so great at improv and comedy, but also the doing the serious stuff too. How have you found that balance of for work in Atlanta? Because you know that's how Dave and I met. I love Atlanta and I love all the work that I got to do. How have you found yeah. that balance of being known for so many things? But you know, like you're kind of a go-to person 
Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, when I, I'm, I'm just an improv guy. That's how I started. Brian Chapman, one of the greatest uh, improv teachers, in my opinion, I'd put him up against anybody in the country. He's super humble, so he would never say that. But uh, he, he literally drilled into me and everyone that he taught that everything you do, regardless of what it is, where it is, improv is about thinking the thoughts of whatever you're given of whatever human, whatever character, whatever. So, and, and every improv show, everything we would do, he would always focus in on that. His critiques would never necessarily be about be funnier or any of that. He would ask us questions like, well, what were you thinking when you said that thing? Because it didn't seem like you were thinking like the character because that part of the whole sketch was different. That part of the scene was really off and different. And it taught me that as long as you're thinking as the human being, as the character, everything you do is right. Oh, I love that. That's a nugget, y'all. Write that down. Yeah, I and that. so... I was... I was I, no, finish that sentence. Go ahead. Uh, so, so I was going to say that, you know, it, it, we would be in scenes and I would be a little self-conscious because I wasn't being funny in an mm. improv show. And I would, we would get done with the show and he would come up and say, that was the most epic scene ever you were just cooking scrambled eggs the whole time at the stove i couldn't stop laughing and i'm like what right i, I wasn't was, funny i was, wasn't funny he said but you were living the life of the character there was one scene where literally they were all being funny and i was over the stove making scrambled eggs and i actually had like an itch on my on my hip so i scratched it and he was like when you did the whole scratch the hip the butt thing oh my god i was rolling <laughs> and i was like what but it was moments like that where I was being a little self-conscious, like I'm not being funny enough. Mm -hmm. But everyone in the audience, everyone in the cast, everyone was like, whoa. Because I was lost in the world of whatever the human being was. So I right. literally just took that and put it on all my on-camera work, yeah. <laughs> whether it's comedy or drama or whatever. And just being in the truth of the moment. You know, I worked with a director once and he talked about if you're outside of yourself, judging yourself, there's no way you can truly be present in the moment as that person. Because mm -hmm. you were literally like looking down, oh, I'm not, oh, I should have said that better. Oh man, now I'm messing up. And you're all in your head and that's all coming through. I'm always talking to my clients about the, the camera is a lie detector. It knows when you're not connected. It knows when you're not telling the truth. You might mm -hmm. think you're doing it, but we can tell. We can tell. And you know what I equate it to? Sometimes I'll tell my students, uh, in, I have an improv for on-camera class where we work on stuff like this. I say, have you ever been in front of someone that you really liked, like you wanted their attention? You could picture yourself in three seconds. You saw your whole life from that moment until you got married and had kids and died when you were 99 years old together, holding hands in a field. Um, but you're so self-conscious that you can't even speak to them. You can't relate and connect. So all of the future you just dreamt of because you're judging yourself. How's my hair? How's my breath? Oh my right. God, my breath bad? I just had an onion ring. Oh my God. <laughs> you're missing out on the moment that could be a destiny moment because you're judging yourself before you even get a chance to connect. Yeah, It's the same thing in front of the camera, right? I, I love that. How, you know, some, and I'll be totally transparent here and I'm hopefully and probably some of you listening and watching can relate. I've taken, when I moved to LA the first time, I got a scholarship and I ended up going to Second City out here for their Improv One. But I have to tell you, before that, I was always intimidated by improv. Like, it, always, because of the thing of like, I gotta be funny. I'm not Tina Fey, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, I don't, you know? And so how do you, what advice can you give to, because also, you know, improv is also suggested to a lot of, uh, professionals and corporate people like for public speaking and loosening up and being in your body so what advice can you give us who are still feeling like oh I don't I don't know how it takes it's so nervous you got to be on the, on the moment and come up with funny things like mm -hmm. this for the newbie who's going to start out yeah so I always tell everyone if you can remember that you being you in your everyday life is actually the true definition of improv. And you can just lose yourself in being you. 
if there happens to be a camera on, then you win. I always, now a lot of people are like, well, yeah, but I'm self-conscious, but I'm so, right, that's my point. You're not self-conscious when you're standing in line at Kroger on your phone, checking your emails and your Instagram because the lady in front of you has 46 (laughs) coupons that she's trying to beat, right? You're just being yourself, annoyed, looking at Instagram, wishing you picked another line. You are improvising your way through that moment of life that just happened for you to experience. If you can have that same mindset that everything you do is literally just a real slice of life moment and you're Mm -hmm. functioning in it, then the stigma of improv just goes away. I think many times, especially in the self tape world where this is the frame, right? And you have to do this thing. um, We get stiff because we feel like we can't move or live or whatever. And I always tell people, um, if you can just live, and ignore every technical thought that comes into your mind, you'll win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I totally agree with you because yes, we're working, it's already weird, like, right? It's a backdrop, it's lights and a camera. You're not, it's not on set, but it has to be in your mind. Like you, you have to see it in your mind's eye. You got to know where the desk is, where, where the, where the exit is, where the door is, where the hallway is you're walking down. Like, see it for yourself so you can totally be free in that moment and be and be free to just be this this person I love this is so juicy so juicy and I tell you one of the things that helps a ton of people is now the everyone has issues so let's just put that out there right everyone (laughs) I don't know what you're talking about I don't have (laughs) except for Christine (laughs) Uh, uh, it's interesting because I always tell people If they're struggling, I ask people, hey, do me a favor. Just go ahead and do what five-year-old you would do. Mm. And they kind of are like, what? I said, what would five-year-old you do in a moment like this where you're a doctor at a hospital and someone's crashing? What would you do if you were five years old in your room and you had your action figure who was on the table and the the Tonka trucks and the dinosaurs were your nurses and doctoral mm. assistants and you're doing surgery going, get me a scalpel, <laughs> right? As the five-year-old you, that is what you need to do here. Mm-hmm. It's exactly the same. And you know, there was a psychological study done where they tested children, brain scanners and truth dete- lie detectors connected to them, telling stories of their favorite playtimes and they were telling outrageous stories. Like this one kid went in his dad's garage and built a spaceship and went to Mars, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Well, they looked at the brain scans and the lie detector tests. The lie detector showed that they were telling the truth. And the brain scan showed that as they were telling these stories of their favorite playtime, the stories were coming from, at a molecular level, the same place as truth because it feels true to them because their imagination your brain stores imaginary thoughts in the same place as truth Mm. so So many of us adults we lose our imagination along the way because we're forced in our everyday jobs or life or whatever to go full logical brain right Right. be realistic Um, Right. Be realistic. Grow up. Let those right. dreams go. You need to make money. Those things, right? So we systematically walk through the process many times of shutting down our imagination. But if we can reignite our imagination and play, if we can live out of the five-year-old us, you know, I've got a four-year-old right now and uh, his imagination blows my mind. My eight-year-old Stella, her creativity is mind-blowing. Um, And so those kids really have solidified this even more over these years in me of really going to that next level of imagination and play and dreaming and creating and closing my eyes and picturing bright, vivid, the colors of the hospital room, the temperature, the smells, right? Yes. Yeah. And that makes it, that makes such a huge difference when we're watching you. Yes, yes. Because now my body will react to whew, the cold of the, yeah. of the room, 
right? My hands aren't functioning like they would in the middle of summer. They're in a cold room, mm -hmm. right? So it's just an interesting dynamic of, of our world when we, and, and I, I tell people a lot, I have to look people right in their cornea and say, I give you permission right. to imagine and dream and play again. Yeah. And it's amazing what happens when they give themselves, they own that permission and let themselves play, you know? It's permission and also, Dave, there's a trust issue there. Mm. It's like when I'm, some of my clients who, who are, feel like they have emotional blocks and, and, and don't allow themselves to fully go there, whatever going there it looks like, Mm -hmm. I, it's about trusting that you can come back to you, right? Yes. And, 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 honoring, and honoring the truth of that character and the spirit of that character. Like, but tr you're safe. You know, it's mm -hmm. that exercise, you know, we, in acting class where we peel, we peel our, our layer off, right? And so they were yeah. just down to the white meat and we <laughs> the new character. But you can come back and put yourself back on. Like, you're safe right? Mm -hmm. But yes, permission. And, and as an actor and as a creative, this is one of the safest spaces where no one's, no, actually no one is going to look at you funny for going right. full out. Like, you know, and so I think that is also why for those of you, even some of my clients who watch and work with me virtually, I always tell them, this is not enough. You need to be in a, get in a class, get around other actors, play, feel nothing replaces that human to human contact and being mm -hmm. challenged and free in a, in a room with other people. So yeah. again, if you're in Atlanta, check Dave out of the creative, you know, Dave, um, I'm going to get into talking about your book, but Dave, also, you know, those of you who saw me on SWAT with Shamar Moore, <laughs> that episode, <laughs> Dave, uh, I, I, he has a great self-tape studio and he actually gave me some coaching during that session too. Like we were, it was going good and he was like, oh, Christine. And like, I just love, and I love as an actor, especially as a coach, I love getting some nuggets. He's like, maybe try, what do you think about this? Well, what, what is she, what, what, and it was like, and then after we finished, you were like, clear your calendar because you're going to be <laughs> legit i was done i'm like yo i hope you ain't got nothing planned because you don't be shooting <laughs> <laughs> and i sure did so i i thank you i thank you let us <laughs> get into let me i want to share my screen really quick hang on uh let's not share my emails how about we go to another screen <laughs> here's my personal information everybody hang on <laughs> i just want to put the visual of the book up that's what i'm trying to do i pulled it up on amazon and okay can we are you seeing it are you seeing my screen yes great so your new book 52 pillars my yes. fa building me my family and my career tell us about it and i'm gonna put the links above or below and if you're listening on the podcast it'll be in the show notes so you can get your copy yes thank you so you know, I grew up in church and, you know, it was, it was fine. You know, like her hearing thousands of preachers talk about all this stuff through the years. But I think the biggest thing for me as I've grown into my manhood <laughs> has been kind of this weird high highs and low lows, right? That us creatives go through. Yeah. And I really found it difficult to find a balance in in everyday life and the creative side of life like I, I found it difficult because I, I would try to separate them and that didn't feel right I tried to put them fully together and that didn't feel good and and I, I was trying to do the spiritual thing but not combine it and be distant but be together it was right. so maddening right so I finally was like okay look I gotta I gotta dig in and, and I gotta find my foundation. I got to find my, my solid rock that I'm going to build everything off of. And years and years and years ago, I struggled with suicidal thoughts really bad. Hearing the, you know, the thoughts running through my mind, the voice is going, man, this world show would be better without your dumb ass in it, right? <laughs> like those kinds of things. And bringing me to a place of just not really even knowing what direction I was going. And before we even got in the entertainment industry, I struggled with even finding a, a purpose like why am i even here what is the point and purpose of all this 
And then finally having that revelation that, you know what, there's millions of people who have no direction. They struggle with anxiety, depression, PTSD, suicidal thoughts, uh, mental illness, um, and, and they have nowhere to turn. They have nothing. And so what I did is I started just digging in to all the different character traits that I saw in people that I admired, uh, stuff I would even find in the Bible, like stories of the Bible, like David and Goliath, right? Like that little dude was so brave and bold and dope. So I would look up different scriptures and different stories about, about how to build that in me. And so the more that I studied, the more that I dug in, the more that I really kind of went there. I found these things growing in me. I found this growth that as I would meditate and focus on one characteristic, I would really see myself change. Mm -hmm. And so, and people around me would see me change. Um, and so what I did is I, you know, I talked with a couple of psychologists about, you know, if you were to, to, to bring something to someone for a year to say, you know, if you were to do this, what would you do for a year? And they were like, look, I would do something per week uh, because it takes about seven times to make something a habit and really meditate and let it sink in. So 52 pillars is 52 characteristics that you can focus on one per week. You read the same page every single week. And I have a package of bow, one of these right here. Hi. <laughs> and so if you look at this, I just opened to peace. Oh, hello. So if, if you need some peace in your life, right, you'll read this, the same page every day for seven days. And then on this side, there's a notes section where you just take notes about why, What's what areas of my you? life is peace missing? What do I need more peace? Where, where in my life is, am I the most anxious? And what things have I obviously not given over to God to say, you know, I'm trying to do this myself. That's why I'm anxious. I don't have peace. And at the bottom of each page, there are different scriptures that talk about how to function in these things. I've always viewed these scriptures, you know, there's a scripture that says that the Bible is like a sword. And so I always viewed it, you know, growing up, I was a Star Wars kid. So oh, uh, I, always, like a I, I always viewed it as a lightsaber. Uh, and I actually put that in the introduction that I've always <laughs> viewed this as like little lightsabers and ninja stars or something, right? That, that you could really use to to protect yourself from these mental attacks, right? And look, as I have continued to do this uh, and go through this even now, building these things in me, it's amazing. People ask me all the time, like, how are you so balanced? How are you so solid? I'm like, look, it takes <laughs> work. Like, it was a process. <laughs> Legit, right? Um, and I did an experiment with a friend of mine who, um, who's really was struggling with depression and anxiety and mental wellness was a major issue. So he was a bouncer. So he had one of those little clickers where you click how many people walk to the door. Right. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, so tomorrow from the time you wake up to lunch, every negative thought that pops into your head, I want you to click that thing and then call me at lunch. And we're going to talk. So he, uh, so he did and he calls me and he had like 112 negative thoughts by lunch. And I said, okay, dude, so let's, let's talk about this now. You've got a, your, your brain is working really hard up until lunch to keep you in that sad, weird, crazy space. Yeah. So that means you got to work just as hard to get into joy. We got to form habits of character traits that will bring you peace and bring you joy so that every single day, now you've got this automated response to all the funk that is hitting you. Right. And so every time you click that thing, I want you to speak an affirmation. I want you to speak a scripture. I want you to say something that brings you power and peace and joy to combat that thing. And it's so interesting how uh, his life's completely different now. Completely different. Because he's conscious of the fight. I think that's a big thing that people think yeah. that once you make a decision to do something, it's going to be easy. Oh, Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then they, and then the, when it's not easy, they say things like, oh, well, it must not be God's will. Well, I guess I'm not supposed to do that. Right. Well, all that means is that you got a couple of devils standing away, punching you in the face and you got to punch them back. Right. right? You're going to fight, you're going to fight back or just keep taking the licks. Like, yeah, I love right? that. What you're saying is 
it's it's almost it's giving us it's giving us armor it's it's giving yes. us a plan of a, a plan of attack because it's that stuff is happening yes the are coming I, I was i tell my audience in my book i'm always like I, I'm, I give my inner critic a name and so my inner critic her name is veronica and honey she's yeah. loud she's nasty mean she's not encouraging <laughs> at all so for me that sounds like if i have your book and i'm i can you know i can just put my finger on what i need help in in that area because yes. because if what comes naturally is not the affirmation or the mantra or whatever uh, every, all your suggestions I, yes. do need, I need help we all need help you know what yes. i mean tell me how to do it it's like going to the gym okay do these ab exercises to get that result you know what i mean yeah just the chips on the couch is not getting it right so, or or being at the gym for two hours a day only posting Instagram pics and never actually picking up a weight. <laughs> that don't do it either. <laughs> Yo, out here hustling. Mm, you haven't picked up a weight. You've been there two hours. You having a photo shoot. You having a legit photo shoot every day at the gym. And then you have this blog like, I work it so hard, this weight ain't coming off. I don't know what's happening. Uh, Yo, Instagram is what's happening, sunshine. So taking it is it's taking action. It's taking action and, and yeah. having a plan. I I love 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 it. <laughs> the visual of this guy that we just created. <laughs> what 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 was your process like in writing the book? How long did it take you once you actually decided to do it? Great question. So and I'm sweating this... so much, guys, because my tea is so hot. So I, yes. keep, I got my Whitney Houston sweat going on. But keep, keep going. <laughs> I love it. You're just glistening. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, so this is an interesting thing because uh, I used to be way back in the day, uh, super steeped in church, doing like preacher stuff, ministry stuff. And this came out like about 12, 13, 14, 15 years ago. Um, and about a year and a half ago, I felt like in my prayer time, God kept telling me, it's time to rewrite that book, pull it back out and read it. So I pulled it back out and read it and the religion, the arrogance that it was seeping with, oh my God, it was suffocating. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm just going to burn it. How about that? <laughs> like, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't going to do it. I wasn't even close to this. And then, uh, and I felt really convicted. Like you need to rewrite it with the new revelations you have, the life experience, everything you've been through. Yeah, you've grown. And now, changed. yes, the growth, the changes, and now when I read it, it so fills me with love and joy and this, this revelation that God is chasing us, that he has all of these weapons and these pillars to build our life with. And he's, he's wanting us to come alongside him to build our life. It's not like he's distant. That's a revelation that I've had with this is that he's, literally next to us going, okay, and here's the hammer. Yep. Put that down. Okay, great. Yep. And now build this. And now we'll put that here. He, we're co-laboring. We're co-creating a life with co him. Co-creator. Oh, holy smokes. Look at you. Woo! Come on now. Uh, completely unplanned and ordained. Evidently that was awesome. Um, literally with him combining with him to create this life that he has for us. I think that's the biggest thing. So in writing at this time, I would take a topic and I would just record myself talking about it mm -hmm. uh, on, in my voice memos. And I would just riff and roll and flow with everything I've learned and everything that I want to be in that area. And then I would take that recording for each one and then just type out what I loved about what came out of me. Yeah. And so the flow of it is very much uh, like me walking back and forth in my office. Like that's the flow when you read it. Yeah. It's just me kind of talking about, um, a lot of it is, is very much me talking to myself a lot too. Like it is time to realize that this is what God has for you. Right. And mm -hmm. so I would put that in there so that people would feel that feeling of, of the draw of just how much God wants us to be solid and confident in what he has for us to build our life. Oftentimes, you know, they say the thing that you coach on is the thing you need the most coaching on. Ooh, yes. <laughs> like, so, you know, like that has been like in the work that I've gotten to do. You get to you. Uh oh, 
I lost you for a second. There you go. In the work, in the work that we get to do, because you're a teacher or coach, you're always having to say it, which is constantly being, it's, you're yeah. teaching yourself again. Jim Rohn used to talk a lot about that. Like, so a lot of times, like even with my book, like my, my, I can relate to that. Like it was the word I needed and yeah. it's the word that I need often. And it sounds like as you created this, as you, as it came through you, it was the word you needed. And it's like, if this help, if this is helpful for me, gosh, yeah. it's, it's gotta be helpful for, for, for someone else. I'm yes. just gonna put it back on the screen again. Again, the book that we are talking about is the book 52 Pillars, Building Me, My Family, and My Career, available now on Amazon. Um, I can't wait to get my copy and just dive in. I'm a highlighter. You see this whole, I got a bucket of highlights. Like, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm a highlighter. There's certain books I listen to in Audible when I'm in traffic, but there's certain books. Like I just also, I got mm -hmm. Gabby Bernstein's new book about super attractor. And like, I was like, no, I need tags. I need highlighters. Yeah. So this sounds like the kind of book that I'm going to need my supplies for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, be before we go, um, in writing the book and deciding to put it back out, what resistance came up for you and how did you push past it great question um literally we've been talking about the thought life um the literally the thoughts of ain't nobody gonna want to read this thing <laughs> right like who in their right mind is gonna spend uh, one yep. penny on something <laughs> yo tail is gonna write when you failed english twice <laughs> twice and now you're gonna try to write something you put a bunch of words in next to each other to make a sentence and you misplaced a bunch of commas right. who is gonna <laughs> want to read that madness right so it was very much that struggle and then the other side of it right which is um yo careful you don't want to be the Jesus guy in the entertainment industry. Mm. You better be careful about all that. You don't, you don't want to be Bible thumper guy right. that nobody's going to want to be on set with. And, and one of the things that I have found is that anytime those thoughts come, they only come because the opposite is true. Mm. And I really believe, you know, uh, one of the things that, that has helped me, my grandpa always said that, um, anytime you're struggling, you have to go back to the real truth of where the struggle comes from. He always used to say that. He's like, you struggling? I'm like, yeah. He's like, where's the struggle coming from? And I, you know, would think, well, probably in me because I'm a little messed up. And, you know, and he'd be like, no, 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 no. Where is it coming from? And he would always bring me back to this scripture. It was one of his favorite scriptures. He always used to say this. He said, I love when Jesus said, the words in red. He always said, that. words in red, boy, words in red. When Jesus said, he saw the devil fall from heaven like lightning. And I don't want to get too Jesus-y on this deal, but it's the truth, right? Mm -hmm. If you remember that the devil getting thrown out of heaven is where all of our struggle comes from, then you understand everything that is good comes from God. Then every single thing that is not comes from the one who's trying to be the opposite of him on purpose. That's such a vital truth. Because many times we just take the blame, like, well, I'm an idiot, right? Or, right. well, my own psychological madness, well, my upbringing, well, my whatever. Now, I will say this. There's a whole lot of stuff that goes into a whole lot of stuff. You got chemical imbalance. You've got PTSD. You've got uh, mental stuff from trauma. You've got uh, so many different aspects of things. But if we can remember that God is 1 million percent for us, that in the fight, he's on our side, that as a creator who's called to the entertainment industry, that he is fully for me, wanting me to be a blessing to people in person, behind the scenes, behind the camera, in front of the camera, telling stories, my influence that that brings, that he is rooting for me and cheering me on to bring freedom to people in all areas. That's a different ball game than just thinking I'm off or that I struggle, right? That's a really different truth. That's a different ball game. 
and I'm not saying like that there's a devil in every cabinet, you know what I'm saying? It's not like that kind of weird stuff, but, but there is a level of truth to that struggle, right? To that lean of understanding, like, wait a second, come on. You know, th- this, this can't be just my What's thing. What's going on with thing. me, right. Right, What's my thing. Yeah, exactly. It's not just the what's wrong with me thing. Because here's the, here's the interesting thing that proves this. And psychologists, this is what I love, psychologists have even said, there is much more than just an individual psychological problem that goes on with people. For it to be spread worldwide, think about this, for the same problem to be spread worldwide, right? It's not just a genetics thing right? We all come from, we're all different. Mm -hmm. We're all the same, but we're all different. Even psychologists have said, there's a something that we can't put our finger on. Christian psychologists who kind of lean more into the whole quote unquote religion and Jesus side of things will say, there's a spiritual side to this thing that that nobody can deny. Yes, you have to do, if you have chemical things, you got to do the medication. Psychologists are brilliant at letting our minds, because that old proverb, right? That says, as we think, so are we. I fully believe in psychology, psychologists helping someone arrange our thought process so that as we think, our life can be paved out the way we want it. So yes to all of it. And know that God is on your side. That you have literal weapons that he's given you in his word and in Proverbs and affirmations and getting your thought process to go to what you're called to, the group of people you're called to serve on this earth, your why, why you're created. Those things give such meaning and purpose and joy that it can literally thwart all of the attacks that are coming into our mind. And it's been proven. Like There's study after study after study after study that have shown When you attach purpose to someone who's clinically depressed and struggling with anxiety and there are are issues in the mental game, they see improvement and improvement and improvement and improvement in all aspects of their life. It's amazing when purpose is attached and when there is this fight back to the thoughts that come. The change that happened is amazing. So... I knew for me, from where I was, struggling with suicidal thoughts, struggling with wondering if this world even needed me, if anyone would even notice I'm gone, to really functioning at this level where where now I fully understand that I'm not here to take part, I'm here to take over, because there's millions of people who need to know their calling and who they're here to serve. Um, That happened through making sure that I'm fighting back and that I'm not just taking it. You know, I, I, this is something I say, and, and when I and I shared this when I was working on my book, I knew my purpose. My purpose had to be bigger than my fear. Mm. So all that stuff that came up that I could totally relate to you when I was in this process, like who's gonna, who's gonna? My purpose yeah. has to be bigger than my fear because people need this book, people need this yes. word, people need this help. There's someone yeah. sitting at home who this is the this is the solution for this is the this is the friend this is the mentor this is the you know those of you at home who don't have you don't feel like you have supportive family or friends who want other creatives who understand you like it sounds like your book and books like this it's just it's a helping hand along the way and gosh we all could use a helping hand Dave where can people find you I'm gonna put the links everywhere but mm-hmm. just for the sake of the recording, where can yeah. people connect with you? Because people, are, I know, like, on, they're probably on their phones now. Like, where can I find <laughs> this guy? Um, so on Facebook, uh, so the studio is called The Creative. It's The Creative Movement ATL on uh, IG and Facebook. Uh, I'm Dave Pileggi on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and the like. Um, and then we have our, uh, we're working on, our intention is to launch the nonprofit here this month, uh, okay. a Kickstarter campaign called, it's suicidehaters.org. And it's going to be a content creation company focused on taking over social media with all sorts of content from posts to web series to TV and film projects, oh, specifically to bring encouragement, joy, laughter, and, and, and inspiration and affirmations to the entire world through all social media channels. We've literally got 10 social media channels 
um, that are going to be dedicated to just bumping out content to encourage people. We've got app developers working on apps and Ooh, software awesome. to attach to social media. Um, and so the Kickstarter campaign to help us get that going is launching soon. So keep an eye out on my social media, the creative social media, uh, and the website suicidehaters.org will be our, uh, our kind of mother hen website where it will all be birthed from. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Keep me, you got my email. Just need, when it's, when it's done, just shoot me an email. Yes. Support and just and share however I need to share. Thank you. Oh, Dave. You know, you and I could talk forever, but I know <laughs> I am so, this is a great way. We're on different coasts, so it's earlier for me. And this was a really great way for me to start my morning before I head out into the world. So I thank you for, for sharing your gifts, for being a friend. Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> but seriously, like you're doing amazing work. Congratulations on the book. Thank um, you. Please support Dave Pelleggi and in all his endeavors. Um, anything you want to say before we wrap? Because this has been just um, so juicy. This is one of those episodes people are going to have to, you're going to have to do that. You just to the rewind. Yeah, rewind. To yeah, yeah, you like yeah. that? My, my skills there. <laughs> yes. Um, I think the, the last nugget is that you are here for more than you think you are. Mm. Like Find that. it. Find you're it. Here for more you're here you for more than you think you are. And uh, and the world's waiting on you. There's nothing else to say. Dave, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you all for watching and listening. Look, if you're not subscribed to this podcast, please subscribe. If you're not subscribed to me on YouTube, please subscribe. You see the theme here, just subscribe, mm -hmm. turn on your notifications, show that you, you, if you enjoyed this, just show your support by hitting the like button or hitting the share button. Don't be stingy. Share yes. this with an actor friend. Share this with someone who needs some encouragement um, because we, we shouldn't grow alone. So, you know, share, sh share the love and spread the love. All right, everybody, have an amazing day. Thank you for watching Actors Daily Bread. Thank you for listening to the podcast at the Hollywood Bound Actor Podcast. And we'll see you next time. Bye, Dave. Thank you. Bye. I love you, my friend. <laughs>